Hey, how's it going out there? Uh, this is Wayne, and we're taking out um, saw saw blades or reciprocating saw blades. Uh, these are very, very, very powerful tool, and again, um, you know, similar to to drill bits and uh, some of the other things at the hardware store, um, it's very hard to decipher what kind of drill bit you need for what application. Do you need demo bits that are going to go through wood, but you've got some nails? Are you going to be cutting thick steel? Um, you know, some other things, stainless steel, uh, hardened steel. There's just so many different things uh, that that you need to consider when you go to buy a sawzall blade. So this is going to be a video. Uh, we're going to get the best of the best blades, and we're going to pit them all against each other. This stuff you can find at your big box store for the most part. Everything here was bought at a big box store. Nothing was special ordered. Um, so this is stuff you're going to be able to find and actually get a hold of. Uh, you know, I mean, you've just got so many different options here. If we come here, you got Rigid's got a wood blade. Milwaukee's got the axe blade. Uh, and then you start to get into your bimetal blades. Um, Diablo, Lennox. And then, you know, you start to get into uh, different grits and different cutting abrasives. This is carbide, this is carbide, this is diamond, and this is diamond. And then over here, uh, we got some new stuff coming out. Um, I, this is the first time I've seen these. Uh, this is the carbide infused blade. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting um, aspect. Basically, uh, carbide cuts just about anything. It's one of the hardest materials known to man, other than diamond. The only problem with diamond is it's super expensive, and uh, it just cuts really, really slow. And if you're trying to cut metal or something, the bonding agent, whatever you bond to it, uh, usually gives out before the diamond does. So, where do we need to, what cutting blade do we need for the best all-purpose blade? What's the best wood blade? What's the best wood and nails blade? Um, where do the bimetals, bimetal blades stop cutting? Because these do cut just about anything um, as far as mild steel. But as soon as you start getting into hardened steel, you're going to start running into some issues. So, just like we did with the ultimate guide to drill bits, this is going to be the ultimate guide to sawzall blades. Um, we always got to come back to the Rockwell hardness scale rating. Why? Because we need to know what the hardness of the material is that we're cutting, and we need, to, we need to know what the hardness is of the blade. Just like with drill bits, you have to have one subject that is harder than the other. The cutting agent has to be significantly harder on the Rockwell hardness scale than the subject that you're cutting. Once we break it down scientifically like this, then the answer is obvious. Um, the only thing that's in question is how are these blades going to hold up? Carbide sounds great, and this is a great tool, and I really like what they're doing with some of their hole saws and, and some of the other things that they're coming out with. Uh, but how does it hold up? The harder we go, the harder the steel we go, and the harder you go with carbide, is it going to chip? Because as soon as you get to carbide, it's extremely fragile and difficult to deal with. That's why building these type of blades is so difficult to do. So, we're going to get a bunch of different stuff. We're going to get mild steel. we got mild steel here, mild steel here. Uh, couple other things. Then we're going to have leaf spring steel. I'll grab a leaf spring. Uh, tool steel. This would be your, your average tool steel. Something like this chisel and uh, maybe a wrench, something like that. Um, and then wood chisels. Wood chisels are extremely hard. These are really, really hard. These are going to be up in the 62 range. As soon as we get out of the 40s and get up into the 50s and 60s, that's when these bimetal blades are going to stop cutting. They're going to stop working. They're just not going to, as soon as you jump up into the 40s, they're not going to work anymore. So the only thing that's going to cut those is this kind of, is carbide, uh, or even possibly diamond. Um, but I'm really, really interested to see how the, uh, see both of these are carbide, but this is like a grit. It's like a, a carbide fragments that are infused and impregnated into the steel. Uh, and this one, is little teeny tiny it's like a saw blade on a circular saw it's little teeny tiny uh chunks of carbide that they've somehow fused to that so as long as the carbide stays uh attached a eh, and doesn't chip uh i predict very very good things for this 
Um, this one here is going to be kind of the same thing. It's a carbide strip. It looks like this one has little carbide teeth individually welded on there or bonded on there. This one looks like an entire strip. If you look at it real close from this side, you can see that strip and somehow they've managed to, to bond that up here. So be it this being one solid piece and having a smaller TPI or tooth per inch rating, uh, I'm interested to see how this stuff all really works. Um, I've got high hopes for the carbide. That's all I can say. I haven't tried them out yet. This is all brand new. Uh, I actually just heard about them uh, a couple weeks ago. So then we're going to get into the stainless steel. Um, you know, you got stainless steel, Maxim knife, um, and cut on that. Uh, and then finally, the hardest thing that we're going to be cutting today is this cobalt bit. This is a, a drill bit from TTP, hardrills.com. Um, and basically the reason I'm using this drill bit is because it's the only one that actually has a certified rating of 66 Rockwell hardness scale testing. They actually sent the drill bits off. These were some of my uh, favorite regular drill bits to, to use for regular to mild steel uh, and even stainless steel and some hardened alloys. Um, these are great, but this is the only one that actually has a physical rating. So this is the only one we could test it on. So we'll actually try and cut this thing. Uh, Diamond and carbide is the only thing that has a chance with this, I think. So, and we got a file. We're going to cut lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Um, and we're going to put some myths to rest. And um, we'll cut some plain wood too because the demo guys out there that are just doing demolition, you really need a, a saw that's going to cut wood quickly. Uh, these bimetal blades will certainly cut through the nails in the steel, but it's going to take forever. Uh, the guys that are going to be doing demolition and cutting wood and, and tearing down houses and concrete, or I mean uh, tearing down houses and framework, um, are going to want this. And the only difference between this Milwaukee blade and a regular blade over here, um, and these have just kind of been, some of these are pretty old and they've just been sitting in a bag and they've got some moisture on them so they're a little rusty, but they're all brand new. Um, the axe has these little fang tips, and so they're claiming that that uh, will, will help out in tooth breakage, which if you look at it, it actually should, because the end of this tooth becomes so fine, uh, that little backup bit right there kind of really helps that out. So, um, we've got all this stuff. I've even got some tile. Uh, real stone floor tile, super hard stuff. Uh, so. We're going to put every single one of these in their place, and you will know exactly what you need to buy at the end of this for your project. So stay with me, and uh, we'll get started. 